What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today we're back to answer more questions in For the Greater. Yeah. Uh, well, this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question, because we get to those questions first. Why does it feel like we haven't done this in a while? We just got back from Christmas, so <laughs> maybe that's why we've been seeing family, talking about death because of COVID. <laughs> yeah, that's true. This Christmas is very different than other Christmases. This this year, mm. um, we're just happy that this is the last week of the year. It should be. Right, right? and it's all magically going to disappear. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, this question comes from Slippy is Back Games and More. Slippy? <laughs> Slippy is back. Um, he asks, do the Trader Legion's gene seed remain intact and untainted? So... So basically, what happened to the gene seed after the traders um, went to chaos and all that kind of stuff? I, I don't think the Adeptus Mechanicus got rid of it. No, it's too valuable to just throw it away. Mm -hmm. So, oh shit, my gum. <laughs> so what happened was, um, they stored it away. They didn't tell the um, like the High Lords, the yeah, the, the Space Marines, the Primarchs, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm pretty sure that the Primarchs still didn't want to uh, get rid of it either. Um, and then when there would be foundings, some of the Adeptus Mechanicus, some of the High Lords, some of the um, people that knew of this Gene Seed would use it and uh, give birth to new successor chapters of Traitor Legions mm -hmm. without them actually saying, like, they are Traitor Legion successors, mm -hmm. which is why you see unknown uh, gene seed sources right and not just that but it could also be that the uh, blood ravens are a major one that's using thousand sun gene seed yep which is another thing too because like when the thousand suns when that because basically with the blood ravens the idea is that they were a crusading fleet when magnus the red was attacked by lehman russ and his space wolves and all that junk happened they were completely separate from it. Mm -hmm. So while these guys went traitor because of Zinch's temptations, these guys were away. So they actually never had Zinch trying to tempt them into chaos. Mm -hmm. So when they came back to the Imperium, they were like, whoa, what the fuck happened? <laughs> yeah. And then um, they probably met up with somebody who was like, no, 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 like you guys fought valiantly during the Horus Heresy. We're not going to destroy you just because you guys are part of Magnus the Red, Magnus the Red or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you still need to replenish your ranks, so we're going to give you this gene seed of your... Progenitor. Yeah, but don't don't tell anybody. Right. Clearly, this they weren't talking to uh, Adeptus Custody. Yeah, to the point where um, even the chapter now, the Blood Ravens now, they don't know who their successor chapter is. So they did such a good job, and probably because the Imperium is so bureaucratic and so swamped with just... I don't know what that would be, just paperwork maybe? Yeah, I guess. Um, that you can hide things like that. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think of that whole... Because um, I just recently watched the um, the start of Watchmen with like the whole... Um, what was that place called? But basically an entire town was massacred. Black Wall Street, they called it, was completely destroyed. And it was just... Nobody talked about it. Like the, the, the record was completely wiped. And yet they're, they're finding, like, the mass graves and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of that same situation where something catastrophic, like being... Or not catastrophic, but something so big, like being part of a, a traitor, is hidden mm -hmm. for 10,000 years. Uh, and yeah, they did it. So um, that's what's happening to the gene seed. Now, to your original question of does it degenerate, uh, it degenerates the same amount as... Um, Any other loyalist gene seed and whatnot. Yeah, and they all had flaws. Mm -hmm. So you had people like, uh, like let's say if it's a successor chapter of the Night Hunter, uh, their genetic flaw was like that whole pale skin, that like gauntly looking, mm -hmm. like ghouls and goblins and stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then obviously if you, if if they were traitors and they went into the Eye of Terror, their gene seed does degenerate and it does corrupt because that is the definition of becoming traitor you become corrupted right and if you're just looking at corruption in that sense i guess you could say that the space wolves are corrupted the uh, blood angels are corrupted because their gene seed gives them mutations and in the imperium sometimes these mutations are not something that they want to have 
Because who wants to say that, oh, yeah, we were protected by werewolves or vampires. Right. It's like it's not Twilight anymore. That was (laughs) 10 years ago. Move on. Move on. Team Edward. All day, every day. (laughs) Uh, This one's by Brandon Barnett. If we're speculating that all of the Emperor's failures were all part of a greater plan, then what could the purpose be for the surviving Thunder Warriors in the greater scheme? I don't think that was part of the plan because the emperor always wanted to, you know, eliminate the Thunder Warriors to make room for the Space Marines. Yeah. So just because there's a few that are still surviving, whether they be in the vaults of Trazian or, you know, elsewhere, I don't think that was ever part of the plan. Right. The emperor dying and being set on the Golden Throne, was that the plan? Probably not, but maybe. Maybe it was the plan at a certain point um, because it, it's kind of like the whole Marvel uh, that end game type of scenario where Tony Stark and what's his name Doctor Strange are mm-hmm. like there's a bunch of possibilities the only possibility means that you're gonna die oh spoiler alert uh, <laughs> and then like so the Emperor is like well there's a bunch of possibilities of us of humanity. Or not even just, no, you're probably humanity, but humanity overcoming chaos. Mm -hmm. And one of them is, I have to become a god and get placed on the golden throne. Right. So you might have known. Yeah, maybe the whole thing about having um, Magnus the Red sit on the throne was just the ruse. Mm -hmm. And he was always meant to sit on the throne. Yeah. It's all a big game of cat and mouse. Basically. This next question comes from Guayvesa Webb. What Tau release do you think we'll get with the Codex? I'm hoping for Plastic Farsight. Yeah, Farsight definitely needs a new model because his is fine cast and it's a lot tinier than the rest of the uh, regular Tau commanders. So I definitely see that coming, but I kind of want them to do something else um, because we've had named characters and it's always the same one. Shadow Sun, Farsight, Anshi. It's like, give us new like warriors from different sets, new named commanders. See, and I think that's interesting because um, I was thinking about the latest box set with the uh, Sisters of Battle and the... Um, Dark Eldar. Yeah, and the the named characters in those, I think, are new, right? Well, Lilith Hesperax was always there for the uh, Drukhari. And then this, the new sister... She like, doesn't even have a name. She's just like a... Oh, she's just, just like, like a... Uh, Canoness or something? Yeah, something like that. Oh, because I was thinking like... Whenever we see box sets like that, I don't feel like they sell as well. And you always see them. Like right now, if you go to any hobby store, you're going to find find that old um, Tau versus Raven mm. guard. No, uh, wasn't that Kill Team? Or no? I don't think it was Kill Team. I think it was just like one of those. Or, you know what? It might have been Kill Team. But like the point is, like whenever there's a box set and the name characters are kind of new... Um, there's no like drive to go purchase it whereas if you get something like the old or the box set with god school and um, ragnar yeah Yeah, those are named characters they bring in people and they're sold out like Mm -hmm. you can't find them anywhere um i think because that's the only way to get gas cool and like it was yeah yeah yeah. but that's like that's the point like if gw or i thought like that was the point like if gw really wants to sell out on a model they should put um far side on on right yeah but then there is that desire that you're saying of like new stuff um, so I guess it depends on the faction. Yeah, because like I said, I wouldn't mind having like if they've you know slapped Farsight on a box against like some Eldar dude, I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But at the same time, it'd be cool to see what different like abilities they'd have, what different war gear they got, um, like a new dynamic pose, that kind of thing. Yeah, they're all, they're all doing that thing. Yeah, it's all the same pose. Uh, knee slightly elevated. Tal have noses now. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Farsight's going to get a nose. Have you ever seen what Farsight looks like outside of a suit? Yeah, just like a regular towel. Oh. They all look the same. Oh. I mean, there's not really that much. Because, like, usually if they're in the uh, military, they've got the same, like, um, hairstyles and stuff like that. Mm. Next question. The Chairman Mao? Something like that. Why do Necron Flayers wear the skin of other races, kind of like orcs do? Uh, well, orcs do that because of pride. It's like, I conquered these people. So Look. I'm going to yeah, display it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Necrons, that's a virus. Mm-hmm. That's like messing with their protocol. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> right. Why would a robot flay somebody, steal their skin, and like wear it? Right. 
It's like if a human did that. <laughs> Normal humans aren't supposed to do that. Guys. Unless they have a virus. Unless they have a virus, <laughs> it, which is bad salt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, because they want to go back to the living. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just messing with their minds. They're constantly thinking of wanting to, to be back into a human or a biological body. Yeah, flesh and blood. So they put flesh and blood on themselves. Mm-hmm. That's scary. Yeah, kind of creepy to see a robot do that. This next question comes from Bob J. Do you guys play any other tabletop games? Ever tried Battletech? Never tried Battletech, no. Uh, we played Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. We played Hero, Hero Clicks, Clicks for a little bit. Yeah. A variety of card games. So we played Pokemon for a while. We played Yu-Gi-Oh. We played Magic. Magic. Um, Uno. Crazy Eights. Spades. War. War. <laughs> um, and then that's pretty much it, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like we're missing something major, but I can't think of it. Uh, cards Against Humanity, probably. Yep. We never really got into War Machine and Hordes. Yeah, that's true. We were about to, and then we were like, nah. <laughs> Um, the one thing we hesitantly tiptoed ourselves into was Age of Sigmar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We mm-hmm. do play Age of Sigmar. Yeah, we haven't played in a while, but yeah. I feel like, we, well, I mean, you have an, uh, an army big enough to say, like, yeah, I can play Age of Sigmar whenever. <laughs> I mean, you just have to have enough. Everybody has enough. Well, within the group, yes. Well, it's, except for that one person, but mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think there, because there is like an entry level, like sometimes... Like, if you get a starter set, your entry level, like, yes, you can play, but you can't really play play. Yeah, it's like you're stuck with, like, the same units, the same tactics. Yeah, but I don't feel that way with uh, Age of Sigmar. I feel like, I mean, I got to build them and stuff, but I feel like I can, I got, I got stuff. Next question. This one's by CK, or maybe CK, because this question is actually a pregunta. ¿Por qué GW, Games Workshop, no hace películas o series de Warhammer 40k. No ayudaría a las ventas de más modelos. También, ¿por qué carajos cuestan tanto las miniaturas? Me encantan sus videos. Saludos desde Perú. Whoa, we got people from Peru watching us. Yeah. All right, here's a translation. Yo, 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 what up, Syndicate? It's me, Peru guy, CK, a.k.a. Ya tu sabe. Oi, today we're going to be talking about why GW don't be making movies or series on 40K. Shouldn't that help out the homies trying to get into the hobby? You know, more publication. That's, that's, actually, that's what you said. That's really good. You, you, you guys should watch on Netflix. There's a series called 60 Days In. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Mm-hmm. There's a guy. His name is Abner. He's like a OG Latin king, and you <laughs> sounded just like him. Uh, thank you. I was working on my OG Latin King uh, yeah. voice. Um, but to answer that question, uh, they they are. Yeah, it's in the works. I think it all got pushed back because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have the guy who did Death of Hope. What's his mm-hmm. name? Or not Death of Hope. No, sorry. it was uh, Hell's Reach. Hell's Reach, yeah. Um, uh, something Boylan. Robin? R- Richard Boylan? Richard Boylan, yeah. He's doing something with the... Bl- dark Blo- angels blood angels no dark angels what are the dark angels because they're fighting tyranids i mm. think or is it chaos i thought it was blood angels damn it's been remember. a while <laughs> um but yeah they're so that one's coming out there's like an anime looking one for assassins and rogue yeah, traders inquisitors gonna be in there too and then i haven't i'm pretty sure they're gonna do something with the guy from astarte mm-hmm. they have to like that thing blew up huge it was trending on youtube and like even now, you see people just doing reactions, and they get, like, thousands of views. I don't know why that pisses me off. <laughs> Whenever I see, like, a random person who, who knows nothing about 40K, and then they're, they're like, um, they're doing that, like, reaction stuff. Um, even sometimes, um, like, when you look at other YouTubers who do 40K, like, consistently, and you look at their, their some, sometimes their old videos, sometimes their re- recent videos, and they just, like, you could tell, like, oh, you guys don't play the tabletop. You read the books. You read the lore. But you don't play the tabletop. And there's something in me that goes, like, Arr. Everybody should play the tabletop. Exactly. But there's, like, so many facets of 40K. It's, like, you can't, like, focus on just playing the tabletop. Because, I mean, when you look at it, who really wants to spend three hours moving miniatures on a board? We me. do. <laughs> um, yeah, but it is one of those, like... Uh, dilemmas that I think all hobbies have mm-hmm. have where like there's a core group of people who are like man I've been playing this since I could walk uh, or since I started walking or whatever mm-hmm. and so it's like this 
you, well, you want to feel like you're a badass. Yeah, fan. everybody has that. It's like, oh, you like you like the sequel trilogy of Star Wars? Well, you know what, Normie? Yeah. I've been, you know, alive since the 80s. I saw them. I grew up with them. You know nothing. It's like you don't know the struggle of picking up a metal model, putting it down, and realizing <laughs> that the paint came off. Yeah. You assholes. You've never got to use Abaddon without his arms. Yeah. Because <laughs> they would break. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah. To answer your question, I mean then. Esperate un momento, ya tú sabes. And then he had a second part. What was the second part? Um, también, ¿por qué carajos cuestan tanto? Oh, and they're expensive <laughs> because 40K is top tier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's why. No, for real, because think about it. Like, if you pick up a sprue from any other faction or any other third party or whatever. Like very hordes, simple. war machine. Yeah, very simple. I could recast it with a one piece mold, no problem. You pick up a freaking, I don't know, Magnus the Red Kit, you can't recast that. If you do, it's gonna look stupid. Um, so they are at a higher level of being able to print out some really badass things. The perfect example is the kit, the, um, the one you bought with the Raven stuff, but it's like Warcry. Oh, the uh, something Cabal. Corvus Cabal. Corvus Cabal, yeah. That's, that kit looks amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a bunch of other ones too, obviously. But yeah, I think that's why they're so expensive. And people will pay for it. Mm -hmm. 40K has a, such a devout following that even throughout the years of GW just raising the prices, mm -hmm. they got us in their hands. I mean, we love the lore. We love everything 40k, and they know that you know even if we do raise prices here and there, people are gonna buy it. Yeah, they got us by the balls. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, ooh, look, maybe we could try War Machines, and they just give you that squeeze, and it's like, well, you know what? I already got 40k stuff. And that's why we didn't go to uh, <laughs> yeah. War Machine because they were just like, Arr! and then they, we were like, <gasps> and then yeah. <laughs> Next question. It's like, that's where the pee is stored. Yeah, <laughs> not my pee. <laughs> It's coming out a little. Don't squeeze that hard. <laughs> Din Tran, what huge event would you like to happen for the coming edition? Boy, Night That Isn't Just Started. Give us some time. We, I, there's no Xeno Codex, is there? Dark. Oh, Harlequins. Is that out yet? I don't think that's out. But yeah. Um, This edition, maybe he meant this edition. We'll give him okay. the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Um, well, maybe he's talking about how big, like, the whole introduction of, like, the Silent King and the Void Dragon and the Indomitus Crusade and the Indomitus box set, how that was really big. Um, maybe in 10th edition. Well, it has to be big. It's 10th edition. Oh, yeah, that would yeah. be cool, yeah. It's got to be, like, some really epic stuff. Maybe the Emperor coming back? I hope uh, they don't. No. I want it to be, like, if they really want to sell box sets, they're going to have, like, a Primarch returning in that box set. Against, like, chaos. Yeah, I think that's the key. The key is Primarchs. The key is uh, anything human-related and Space Marine-related. Mm -hmm. Those are the big things. Yeah. Uh, maybe a story with, um, like, getting a new Bjorn the Fellhand model would be nice. Because, obviously, the old Dreadnought doesn't look as cool as the new Dreadnought. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, more name characters crossing the Rubicon. More Primaris coming back. Right. Um that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. If anything, I think it'd be cool to see the uh, Blood Angels have it. Maybe not in the way of like Sanguinius returning, but having like the Sanguinor reveal that he's something else entirely, or like a half of Sanguinius. So that way, it's kind of like half Primaris, half Primark, new uh, new model against uh, Chaos with wings. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. Uh, next question comes from Slippy is back, games and more. He asks, are chapter masters of regular space marines, or are chapter masters regular space marines but more experienced? Yes. Yeah, I mean, captains are the same thing, lieutenants are the same thing. Uh, if you're a chapter master, eres cabron. You're the top of the top. Um, you got there for a reason, whether it's because you're a master tactician or because you're the best uh, fighter. You got that position because you can do at all yep and those were the questions for today if you guys have more questions for us please comment down below thank you guys so much for listening we'll talk to you tomorrow this has been the sound alchemist Krishwan, and we are out of here <laughs>